Augustine Francis is a talent developer at the School of AI. He's also a former software developer for over 10 years. Please, let's give a round of applause to Augustine Francis as he comes to the stage to give his speech on integrating artificial intelligence in software development practices and workflow. Augustine Francis, please let's keep clapping to the guests to the stage. Let's keep clapping. Thank you. How are you all doing? Hello everyone. Are you good? How was your uh, lunch? It was good. It was good, eh? Uh, can I have... Alright, nice. Alright. Are you all ready to talk about AI? Are you ready? Yeah. Or is this Squiddy Games? I know everyone is used to me standing here for Squiddy Games. Don't worry. The horror show starts very soon. All right, all right, all right. Well, I want to talk about AI now um, because it's an interesting topic for me. It's an exciting topic for me. I told you, you know, uh, programming gave me PTSD after some time. And because of that, I told myself, you know what? I have to go back to my first love. Let me be sure. Yeah. So I have to go back to my first love. So, you know, AI and robotics and all that, it's beautiful because um, using AI, using a, a, a model to kind of like carry out predictive analysis, for example, some of you here that have tried betting, you know, you pass historical record and it kind of generates odds for you, you know, uh, if you use ChatGPT, for example, you could achieve that. Um, or you could pass, like I did it once where I actually forgot that it was Valentine and I went to ChatGPT to generate like a, a text. I know it sounds bad. It, it wasn't personal. I had to like tweak it a little bit for it to now have that personal touch. But it was an interesting thing. The person was like, oh, and I was like, eh. But it was, you know, ChatGPT telling the person, not me. So AI is fun, but it's more fun when you're developing it. Like it's, it's more fun when you're carrying out research, right? A lot of you software developers say DSA is only for interviews. But when you go into AI, it's a little bit like your everyday, everyday bread and butter. But I'm not going to talk about the engineering parts of AI. I'm going to talk about how to use AI as an engineer. You know, um, it's kind of like we're getting to a point where AI is no longer um, just artificial intelligence uh, and make up intelligence like many people think. It's now coming to advanced intelligence, now coming to assistive intelligence, right? You're providing it with information. So we're going to look at that, how it helps developers become more productive. But I'm not going to come into the whole prompt engineering thing, how to write prompts. Even if I might touch on it, but I'm not going to, you know, base my whole life on it. But so to understand how AI helps you, you know, carry out, uh, become more productive as a developer, we need to look at the creative process, you know, from idea to establishing that idea as a means or a system, right? So you have an idea, you're thinking building a product or building this community stuff or whatsoever, or maybe you have a ticket and the ticket requires you to integrate something or build something or whatever it is. Well, you could have different approaches to solving that. Now, for many de developers, sad developers, I'm going to use the phrase sad developers, those people who really don't create anything new, you use made-up codes on Stack Overflow and ChatGPT to literally just populate your VS code. That's sad. That means you're not really enjoying software development. You're just going by. Well, that's terrible. But for people who actually think through the processes, they, they think through you know, different ways to approach it. You have to go from ideas, you know, testing. Some of, you know, there, sometimes you're, as developers, they, are, they are emphasize unit testing. They're like, hey, you got to test your code. You got to test if the code is scalable, if it's, uh, you know, performance and all this other beautiful stuff. But the truth of the matter is, you know, there's that creative process. But let's shift back a little bit. Before we talk about AI, let's imagine this happened to a person. Let's say we had a mentor. If we had a mentor, 
And it, that mentor was, you know, we had the opportunity to ask that mentor 20 questions a day, 50 questions a day. What's going to happen? You're going to see him tweet. Stop asking your mentors Googleable questions. You guys see things like that, right? Where they're like, don't ask me so many questions. You know, go figure it out yourself. Well, boo-hoo, we now have AI. So I'm going to ask AI all the things I think. Is my teeth too white? Am I too fat? Do I need to have three monitors to be a developer? You know, I can now ask, you know, AI those things. So we don't need mentors anymore. Don't, you didn't hear that from me anyway. Uh, because ChatGPT might lead you astray. I, I can almost tell you that. So, you know, you have the process from the thinking, you're asking different questions. Uh, the, the testing part, you're, you're, you're asking different questions. The tinkering part, you're asking questions, you know, how to approach problems, how to approach all those beautiful stuff. But now when AI comes, there's that little problem. There's just that one small problem that you might be filling yourself with bullshit information, pardon my French. You know how when you go to chat GPT and you ask it a question and it confidently tells you nonsense? Like it tells you nonsense with absolute certainty. Take it to the bank and you withdraw. But it's absolute nonsense. So you have to always be very careful when you're working with AI. Whatever we're going to look at today, you have to be very careful and say, hey, you know what? I learned system design from ChatGPT because I had a system design interview. I learned everything from ChatGPT. Well, you know, have an, in, you know, an interaction with a human person that understands system design because you'd be surprised. Majority of what you learned were actually made up lies, right? So always collaborate with human expert. Make sure that whatever you think you're learning from your prompt engineering skills that you're going on ChatGPT, Cloud AI, or Google Colab, because you're having situations where you integrate AI into your laptop VS Code and you see it generate a bunch of hallucinated code that doesn't actually do anything. And in your mind, you feel like this is legit, but it's actually a lie, right? There are very massive, massive limitations with this thing. I actually have my own personal views, which of course are spicy. For example, they say ChatGPT has an IQ of a thousand something. Well, I think that's just exaggerated lies because ChatGPT is like a human being who has an opportunity to access any information from a library if he was in the library, right? So if I was in the library and asked me a question about 1998 or 1800 Chinese war, and I knew exactly where in that library, that book that talks about it is, right? I could just go quickly get it for you, right? Does it mean I'm smart? Does it mean I'm intelligent? No, not really, not really. So we're not at the point where we should start you know, evaluating AI in terms of IQ, or EQs type stuff. But anyhow, it's part of the hype of the industry. So always verify your knowledge or anything you're learning from a human expert. So now let's go to something interesting, right? The technology behind, yeah. Let's talk about the technology behind the whole tools thing, right? On the left, you have the monkey smoking a cigar. On the right, you have information about the code. Well, for developers, what's a bundler? What does bundler mean in web dev? And a monkey smoking a cigar. Which of this information helps you more as a developer? Anyone? Left, right, which one? Good, right. Wow, monkey smoking a cigar. Who said that? The one to the left, right, helps you as a developer more, right? So things like uh, Mid Journey, um, other AI image generating platform doesn't really help you as a developer. So I'm not going to talk about that part of AI generation or all that, but they are still part of generative AI. But I'm not going to talk about the monkey smoking cigars or the prompts behind how to get the monkey to smoke a cigar. So developers love free tools, right? Any integration or tools that a developer sees that they don't have to pay for, but it's valuable, we love it. But I'm torn. You know, because how can I speak to developers who love free tools that some of the tools they have to pay for, maybe $20, $25 a month, and it's like, I don't even have a job, and you want me to pay $25 a month. Like, so the good news is, I personally hold the opinion that AI isn't at the point yet where you have to pay for it. It's not that smart yet. That's my belief anyway. But this is going to, you know, they're going to kill me because it's like, you know, commercial companies that are charging you money for it. You know, stuff. I think they are mostly charging you for the ease of use, not necessarily the brilliance behind it, right? So they are charging the fact that, oh, it's integrated to your VS Code, so it's better. It's integrated to your chat app, you know, Meta. It's better. It's integrated to your, your CI CDs and stuff, so it's way better. So they are charging you for that convenience, right? 
we developers, we like comfortable things. So I'm torn between talking from the point of developers who want to pay for it and the developers who don't want to pay for it. But I really will talk from the developers who don't want to pay for it. I'm here for you. All right? I'm here for you. Free tools rock. So let's look at some of the tools that exist. You know, you have for code documentation and reasoning, you have tab 9, a VS Code extension. I personally use tab 9, if I'm being honest. You have Mistral's chart, GitHub Copilot, WAP AI. WAP AI is a terminal for AI, so it, you could literally you know, ask it to create a command prompt for you. So for example, if you wanted to do a post request on your terminal, you could just literally ask you to generate the post request. I actually got you know, to know WAP from, I think, one of Kelvin's video, and it was interesting since then. I haven't looked back. Uh, there's also Notion AI. If you use Notion, you could actually tell Notion to, well, I think Notion AI is still relatively one of the dumbest AI out there, but it's actually still useful. Um, yeah. I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm actually bringing out all the spice in me that, you know, was supposed to be in the panel session. So I'm just putting all that anger into this presentation. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. So for UI design, which is less common for developers, you have Bubble.io. I actually love Bubble.io. I found them on TikTok. Lo lovely platform. Still has some few kings, but lovely platform. You have Visily, Galileo, UIZard.io. These help you pretty much generate UI, you know, faster. So don't always think, you know, AI is just codes or text and stuff. It also helps generate UIs as well. So let's talk about AI as your work bestie. Uh, you know, some people say it's always good to have uh, gender equal bestie, like male, male, female, female. Well, now we now have AI human bestie, right? But the thing about our bestie is it has to be personalized, secure, consistent, and evolving. Imagine if you met a stranger in the conference and you're like, my boyfriend broke up with me. It's like, what? Why do I need that information? So imagine now I'm going to tell an AI that you need to solve a problem for a project that it has no idea about, right? So it, your AI has to be personalized. It also has to be secure. It has to be consistent, which is always a problem with AIs. You know how you could open an open AI uh, chat editor and you, you ask it a question and it answer it so smart, like the answer was spot on. It, it was like a life. Then you still ask another question that was way simpler. And that stuff just flopped so bad. And you're like, what's going on? So it has to be consistent and it has to always evolve. So imagine a situation where you might be working on an open source project. First of all, the AI understands. Oh yeah, a lot of people say, you know, I'm not a fan of open source. Why am I using open source as an example? So you're working on an open source project and it understands exactly what the project is about. It could even recommend, you know, issues that you could work on on the project. It could, you know, help you, you know, guide your thinking process through each issue you're working on and all that beautiful stuff. That's what, you know, for me, I dream AI to be about, right? I think that's what they're trying to make GitHub Copilot to be about, you know, understanding those context-specific problems to each and every one of you. The only sad reality is, think of it like just one server serving multiple users' different interests. Does that feel feasible? Is that scalable? Just one server serving multiple user interests. It doesn't feel feasible, right? Because there might be overload, yeah? Might be infidelity issues with the server, right? So for a model, we have just one, maybe GPT 3.5 model, serving your interest for solving whatever commerce problem or fintech problem, and someone else is now trying to use it to solve a, a business logic problem. So there's always that issue. So people are saying, oh, how can we make a model specific to a user without requiring the user to have expensive GPU? So we're, hopefully that problem is solved. So your work bestie is interesting that you have, you know, you need to have integrated to your workflow. So for VS Code, you could have Tab9 installed, you could have, you know, GitHub Copilot or any other AI tool installed on your VS Code. You could also have it as part of your CI CD workflow, you know, evaluating different points, right? Evaluating each point as you go. But one of the problems with AI is sometimes AI doesn't retrieve the right information, but it retrieves A information and confidently tells you that's the information you need, right? That's the hallucination part. So sometimes it's always best for you to provide context to your AI. So for example, you could open your AI editor, open a fresh chart, 
and give it a specific kind of context. Hey, I'm going to be talking to you about tailwind styling. And these are some of the common type of stylings I use. This is how I center my div. This is what I do when in this situation. You give it some you know, very specific context to tailwind. And the only thing you do in that chat is ask it about styling, right? That's way easier, right? Because the AI model would be learning what your decisions are. A lot of you, or let me ask it this way. Let me not, let me not generalize it. How many of you ask ChatGPT for help and go back to ChatGPT to tell it that help it gave you actually worked? OK, so we have three people, four people. I actually expected fewer hands so that my point would stick, but OK, good. Best practice. <laughs> good practice, right? So you always have to go back, give it that feedback. But here's the thing. Let me ask this one. How many of you use just one chat to solve all your problems? One chat. That's like, I know you might have many chat history in your chat GPT, for example. How many of you use one chat? You ask it React. You ask it Backend, Firebase, everything on that one chat. Everyone, right? Good. So that's the bad part because you're now taking it through layers of issues because we always assume that chat instance understands everything, but it's always best to keep, give it one thing. Oh, yeah. People like this light. No, because it's white, right? Light mode. Light mode, innit? So why do developers hate this slide? Imagine if I had this question asked to chat GPT. What do you think it would reply? It would start giving me different reasons why developers might hate a slide. It wasn't configured right, typo issues. Now, if I give it this part, how many of you hated this particular slide? Was it because of light color choice? Right? Now, I'm giving you a bit of context, right? Now, if I take it back to ChatGPT and ask, why do developers hate a white light theme colored uh, slide? It's going to now say, oh, you know, it's popular among developers to like dark mode over light mode. Yeah, that might be the reason. It's now giving you something a little bit more specific, right? So if I was doing a research on which theme I should most likely have used during my app development, rather than ask this question, I most likely ask this. So which of the above questions was easier to answer? By answer, I mean you immediately understood what the question was asking. This, right? So we human beings, when we chat with ourselves, imagine I meet this fellow and I ask him, did the person come? That's, it. That's just the question. Do you think he would give me a, an adequate answer? No, right? First of all, which person? Yeah? So you provide him with context. Oh, did the governor come to your location or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't come. Oh, no, he didn't come. No. So there's more context. So when you're actually having conversations with ChatGPT, you have to provide you context. Let's move on. This was an example. Let's go back to light mode. So when we're talking about personalization and consistency in our chat, now, this chart could be anything. That's the first thing. This chart, when I mean this chart, it could be anything. It could be charting your terminal with a model. It could be charting with ChatGPT on the platform. It could be, you know, Copilot. It could be Cloud AI, anything. Anywhere there is a prompt for you to enter and a response back to you, that's where you talk about personalization and consistency. So there's a prompt and request a context knowledge and non, not knowledge reference. Now, the problem with many people is we don't really know the context. We usually go to ask ChatGPT or any other AI model questions that we don't really know anything about. So we usually give a vague question. Well, that's bad. Usually provide context. Hey, I'm working on ABC. I'm having this particular kind of problem. This problem only exists on this point. You know, just the way you go to Stack Overflow for help. And if you don't provide too much context and screenshots and all that stuff, they are going to bounce you out of Stack Overflow and insult your mother. That's how ChatGPT won't insult your mother, but yeah, you're not going to get your answer. Feedback and updates, which you know many of you practice. Hey, it worked. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe from now on, this is how we should work on this kind of problem. Fantastic. So let's use this example. First of all, you start with a chat. You know, React, whatever. So the title of this chat is React Engineering Brain Room. That's why I gave it. Now, a lot of us don't really go through all this process. It feels too structured, right? It feels like just enter and just search like Google. So of course, this is the chat room. Then here are the rules. We only discuss React development. We review code samples together and develop our own standard for solving different problems we encounter. You play the role of team lead. But I will come in time to time to provide feedback if the code sample provided is not accurate. 
right? So this is a prompt. This is literally everything from here to here is a prompt. Literally a prompt. Like everything is a prompt, not this part. Everything. I gave it rules. I gave it a title. Let me know if you understand this reply with a yes, I understand, or no, I need some clarity. So what this does is this helps tell the AI not to, you know, fill me with all that long talk. Do you know how when you ask it a question, it's telling you unnecessary information, right? Well, add this part to your prompt and say, hey, simple stuff. Just tell me, yes, you understand. No, you need clarity. I'm going to clarify. Of course, look at it. Yes, I understand. And it still had the mouth to add something that I didn't ask it. Let's dive into React. You see how stubborn you know, the models are? They just want to make you feel like they can talk. ChatGPT is the biggest AI talker team I've ever met. Like, Claudia, AI respects your prompts even way better than Chad. It just wants to, you know, over, you know, over Sabi kind of thing. Yeah, good. So for context, here are some codes I've implemented over time, right? So what I did at this point was I actually pasted, actually pasted a long line as much as was within the context requirement for OpenAI. I post, I pasted like a long line of code. Different components I had built in that particular project, and I gave it and said, here are the contexts I've implemented over time. Now, this would create a context overload if I, with what I did, which was copy an entire component file, like many of them, which were like maybe 20 lines or something. It's going to cause context overload because each of those components had their own respective problems that were not re related. So the best thing to do is, so, and I said, let me know with a simple yes or no. I need some clarity and process everything I've sent to you. This is why I asked it. Yes, I got it. That was meant to be the end. But no, it wasn't. It went, let's review these code samples and discuss any improvements or standards we can establish for React developer. Now, who can? I dare anyone. Tell me why. It didn't end here and it extended. I guess. It's, it's not, it, it might not be the real reason, but who can speculate why it went beyond? Who can just try? Any reason? The answer is here. Any reason? Speculate why it didn't stop there. Can you speculate? Yeah? Why didn't this stop there? Why you still mentioned the React development stuff? What? Like, why you still went ahead to Yeah, specify? why did you say more than the end point? Yeah, you've given it some set of rules. Yeah. Of which you told um, it that um, this chat is basically for React development. Okay. So it's still reiterating to that rule that you've set. You're almost correct, but not entirely. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. They, I, I cropped that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So it was rule two and three. It's playing a team lead. How many of you have given team code to your team lead? They didn't say anything. They, ah, thank you. Bye. Like, just, they didn't say nothing. They didn't call you back later for a huddle hour. Oh, you made a mistake. Yeah. Right? It happens. Yeah? So, it's playing the role of a team lead. It's not going to keep quiet. I can't command it to keep quiet. So, for security, we had a teenager who took security APIs to GitHub, right? Yeah. Some of you have done it. You've actually copied your APIs key, API keys to ChatGPT. If you've done it, raise your hand. Edjo, you've been doing everything in this whole prop, this whole thing. So you've been the one thing you shouldn't do in terms of security is copy your API keys and all this stuff to chat GPT. You know, you shouldn't. So can you generate a simple code that specif that shows a profile photo and users can select? Now, can anyone tell me authoritatively if this code is good or not? Especially to the crops. You can't see it clearly, not even at the closer screen. Oh dear. Millions. Is that code good? Especially line six, seven type, I think. Is it good? Is this React code good? This component class. Is it good? Are there problems in that code? Anyway, for me, nine out of ten, I think this code is actually hallucinated because I really do not understand what this is. It looks good. And the created object URL is coming from where? Right. Oh, I, I, so 
don't always copy your, for security and evolution, don't always give it security information to your code. Don't always have this mindset that AI is a black hole where once you throw it in, it disappears and you're all fine and good. Nah, 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 it doesn't, right? It doesn't disappear for anything. So AI is not an endless well of value. There are reper repercussions to wrong use. They, they, they might not feel like there is any issue right now when you make those simple mistakes, but long term, you know, I don't want to be killed by AI. Do you want to be killed by AI, right? Or do you want AI to start generating people's password just because? You tell it, please, yeah? You're going to be saved. During the AI evolution, you're going to be saved. Anyone who doesn't say please and thank you, yeah, you're, there's a threat to life. So let's, let's look at the, 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 the rules of use. Don't break the rules of ethics. Don't share your company's APIs and security codes just because you're lazy enough to cut that part out. You just copy the entire file and you start putting, then when you can't you know, debug, you say, okay, this is the API key if you want to try to connect secretly online and test it. You know, some of you might have done it where you want to tease it to, even if it doesn't tell, don't tell me, but just connect online and do it. No, don't do that. So stay within the uh, rules of ethics. And context is king. Always give it context. No matter how you feel, it's a simple question. Just give it context. Let it help you help yourself, right? Give it context. Context is king. Vague requests give vague response. Just go in there because you think it's an all-knowing model. It's going to, oh, it was hyped on Twitter by OpenAI, so it's going to know what I'm thinking. Nah, vague requests gives vague response. Imagine going to ChatGPT and ask it, give me the recipe for a butter cake, for example. As easy as it might be that if you Google it, you might see a more accurate response. ChatGPT might see flop, right? So ChatGPT fails, you know, esoteric and exoteric information. It's, it's always easier for ChatGPT to give you templates in terms of approach. Okay, to make a butter cake, you have to, you know, have these things. But the order and the size which you might need them, it's left for you to decide. So always keep that in mind when you're working with AI that just because it's a general information doesn't mean it's going to know it the way you want it to know it. And when it's not a general information, always try to converse with it to brainstorm back and forth, right? That's the best way to go about it. Else you're just going to lose information. Hallucinations are a sign of knowledge limit. Some of you feel when your model is hallucinating, that means you need to change the prompt. You didn't give it, you want to add. Uh, nah, at that point, you are speaking to the dollar, the class dollar. The only thing you can now do is walk towards your model to actually, you know, give you a template rather than the answer, a template. Approach it this way, try it this way, try it that way. There was a time I had a problem with the code base and I, I, I spent almost 30 minutes on Claude AI. I gave it different variations of the problem, different errors it was showing. I Googled that stuff in five minutes, I fixed it. I didn't know if I should renown AI and go back to software dev and just, you know, stop believing the facade or just get angry with myself for not even trying Google first to solve my problem. So sometimes, you know, and because of that, I developed a slight PTSD in such a way that the next problem I had, I went to Google first. I didn't even bother. I went to Google straight up. So once you start seeing it hallucinating a lot, don't even bother yourself. That's a knowledge, knowledge limit. Generate logic where answers are not gotten. So you can't, for example, like the experience of the debounce. If you go to ChatGPT and say, okay, you know, develop a debounce, you know, function for me, most likely it's gonna give you something absolutely bull, right? So instead, try to understand what the bounce is. What does it do? What's it about? You know, what are the limits? What, what exactly is expected from such a function? So understand the logic, the algorithm behind it. Then maybe you generate the code because you're a developer after all. You're not uh, an artist. Generate the code and make it work for you. So mental shift. The common folks might see AI as a tool. The, de the developer should see it as a companion, a bestie, right? Try to understand it beyond just I'm writing prompts. Try to go beyond it. Now, you know, here's the secret for every one of you that are here. If a company is going to integrate AI or implement AI into their, maybe their product or something, they're not going to look for AI researcher or AI engineer. They're going to look for you, the ones who understand how it works and where it's working to. I'm almost done. Thank you. So the person that understands how it works and how to work with it, not just in terms of prompting, but in terms of how to integrate it, either through models, API, fine tuning, they're gonna to go to you, right? Majority of the companies are gonna work with their developers, not AI researchers and all that. They're gonna work with you 
to actually make it work. So change your mindset of how you look at AI. Be proactive of its use and not reactive. Don't wait until it gets popular before you start trying to understand it and use it. Most likely, you're already too late. AI is slowly moving from artificial intelligence to advanced intelligence. Don't underestimate its impact, people. Don't underestimate it, right? You people are already competing with Indians for cheap labor. Please. I think that's what we're saying in the panel, right? Cheap labor stuff, right? That's your unique advantage as a continent, all right? So your unique advantage is being challenged by a third party that might be cheaper, which is AI. So be careful. Go from using AI to building with AI. Integrate elements of AI in what any demo project or any live project you're building. Try to understand how to use AI. I hope you learned something. I thank you. And this is the end of my talk. You could get AI for software engineers. It's an interesting book. Well, you could pre-order it. And I appreciate you all. Am I supposed to take questions? Any question? Ah, thank God the light is not here. Nice. The light is not here because his hand would have been up. Yeah. Are you the one asking question? Yeah. See me in the room. <laughs> Give someone else. <laughs> All right, give, give the space. What? Yeah. <laughs> Which room, Yeah, thank please. you for your talk. Please specify the room. Any room. <laughs> Even the speaker's lounge is a room. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I just have one question. How yeah. do we deal with the bias problem with AI? Because there are times where I give a prompt, yeah. and based on the response I get, it's basically maybe US-specific yeah. information. Yeah or something else, and then I can't get any local data from the response. Yeah, well, the, the short answer to solve that is build your own. The long answer to solve it is provide you context, right? So let's say you were trying to get information that concerns Lagos on housing something, right? So you just have to find at least the closest data that resembles what you're looking for, pass it as context. But don't treat it, at that point, don't treat it as Google, where you feel like it's just gonna go get the information somewhere. You have to pass that context, at least something close to what you're looking for. Pass it as a context, then see how it responds. But when you start seeing that it's hallucinating, forget about it. There's nothing you can do at that point. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you could give him the mic. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Yep, yep, yep. My question is this. Okay, so I have the specific use case where I... Is that mic on? Is yes. it showing light? Okay, yes. okay. Okay, so I have this specific use case where I, I need to kind of build a custom-made, let's say, workflow yeah. for a particular company, and they, they kind of need me to use AI. Okay. This. And now, we are dealing with sensitive data, right? and most times they are individuals' information. Mm -hmm. And is there like, um, you know, from your own yeah. research and all, is there like a, a solution where I could kind of boost on my own without having to interact with APIs and send data to Kelvin. Oh yes, there's, there's definitely, the, the solution actually, everyone clap for Kelvin. Everyone clap for Kelvin. <laughs> right, so Kelvin made it possible that we are hosting our Llama 3 on our own GPUs, right? So we, the, any question we are generating or anything we are generating through Llama 3 is fully local. Like it's us, Meta doesn't have any connection to it, right? So if I wanted you to generate a story for me or whatsoever, you know, it's, I thought they were not showing me, they're showing the handsome people over there. So, you know, whatever we are going to generate with it, it's local. So, any user data is, or any data, if it was production level with people's sensitive information, still us. Do you understand? So, it's just there, local. What? Lama 3, yeah. Yeah. You could also use GPT-5, but, yeah, not going to happen. Yeah. So, you could just run it on your own server as well or your own you know, machine that has GPUs that can run in friends. Any question? Yeah, Jome. You have a question? After that. Yeah, okay. So you talked um, about a personalized, a personalized companion being better and not a generic answer generator. Yeah. yeah. So, but if we were to have a personalized companion, wouldn't it mean training it with our behavioral attributes, our logic, emotional emotions, and it is it. Yeah. Well, you're not, you're not, you don't need to train anything. Um, you have siblings, correct? You have parents, yeah? Um, 
when you, or let's use your best friend because you didn't grow up with them. When you met your best friend for the first time, did you say, sit down, let me train you in my knowledge and likeness? You didn't do all that. From time to time, you just shared information and you always believed that they remembered, right? So for AI, you don't need to train them on anything. Just so long as they remember you mentioned something, they can use that to deal with you personally, right? No, I think it's a forward. Uh, Thank you very much, Augustine. Please, if you have more questions, send it to his See me DM. in my room. <laughs> See him in his room. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please, let's give a round of applause to Augustine for that powerful delivery. Thank you so much.